Okay, so a basic exponential function. I'm just going to just jump right into this. Okay, a basic function, like here's a linear equation, y equals mx plus b, where m is slow, b is y-intercept. Okay, well, you probably, if you're studying continuous growth and compound interest in the Euler number, you've, you've probably got a pretty good handle on that. Um, exponential growth is basically when you have the exponent is your variable x. And so it looks... So just like y equals mx plus b is kind of the one for linear, y equals a b to the x is the one for exponential growth. That's the most basic form. And so then we're going to, I'll show how that varies as we go. All right. So um, a stands for your initial amount of something. And B, B stands for growth or decay. And uh, so B could be 1 plus your rate of growth for growth, or B could be 1 minus your rate of growth for decay. Okay, and I'm not going to give examples of this because... I'm assuming if you're studying Euler numbers, you kind of got a handle on that as well. But it's kind of neat to see how it all connects together. Okay, then you can also, from there, and I jumped too far down. So from there, that's our basic, basic exponential. Um, we can take that a step further and talk about compounding. Because like this first equation is if you uh, just compound annually. And uh, again, it, I'm hoping you understand, if you don't understand what compound interest is or compounding growth, uh, go find a video for that. Maybe I'll make one later. But uh, um, the equation for compound growth is this. And you should be able to see the similarities between it and, uh, between it and the exponential. Because notice... Uh, you know, I'm changing the letters around on you, but P is your initial amount. Um, 1 plus R was what we had, and it represented the A we were talking about before. 1 plus R over C was your um, B, or your growth rate. Or you could do 1 minus R over C to the CT would be for decay. Um, so, and C stands for compounds. You know, how many times are we going to compound that interest? R stands for your rate of growth. So if your rate of growth, so for example, if you had uh, $10,000 invested at 5% uh, interest um, compounded monthly, so every month we're going to compound the interest, uh, credit cards compound daily. Um, so compounded monthly means uh, C is going to be 12. If you compounded daily, it would be C would be 365 for every day of the year. Uh, interest is always given in yearly increments. APR, annual percentage rate. Uh, so what you so what this equation would look like would be a thousand or ten thousand, excuse me times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 12 for compounded monthly to the 12 times t, where t is the number of years. And you could do some calculating on that. Uh, you know, you could figure it for one year, for two years, etc. But I'm mainly just showing you how this all connects. So, and as you... If you keep connect, if you keep compounding, so this is C is compounded daily. So imagine if you compounded every second, the number would be huge. You know, if you wanted to compound daily, we'd look at something like this. It'd be ten thousand times one plus point oh five to the three sixty five to the three sixty five t. And if you, you know, I I don't want to spend the time doing uh, compounded hourly, you'd figure out how many hours are in a year, 
and that would go in this this spot and so it'd be a huge number eventually what you're going to do is reach a point where you want to compound continuously if you compound continuously the equation looks like this um, y equals p e to the rt where p is your initial amount r is your growth rate and t is your time but this number e is called the euler number and e is defined this way it's the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power. So I hope you see the resemblance here of, uh, you know, remember compound growth, y equals p 1 plus r over c to the ct. And you can kind of see the, 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 the connection between the two. But here's what happens. Um, what this e is, it's a number, like e is like pi. We know pi, pi to the first power is 3.1415 blah 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 blah. You're already aware of that. e is similar, it's an irrational number. And how you come about this uh, irrational number is to, this, is to use this. So in other words, to figure out what e is, you, or, or the Euler number, you would take 1 plus 1 over some huge number. So let's start with um, a million. And then take it to the millionth power. It's like compounding a million times instead of compounding 360 times. There's a million times. And when you do that, you plug that into the uh, calculator. Um, 1 plus 1 divided by 1 million to the 1 millionth power is um, 2.71828 and then it's got 0, 04 dot 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 well so we've got we've approached the Euler number the Euler number is if you could instead of a million you could go to an infinitely large number well, that, that's impossible. You're, you can only approach an infinitely large number. So the calculator um, also approximates it. And your calculator, all, all scientific calculators have it or should have it. Uh, just take a look for it. But it's generally by a button that looks like this, which is the natural log. We'll talk about that uh, another time. But... Um, and it looks, or it might look like this. Typically, you have to do a shift to get to it. And so if you do e to the first power, you know, see if you got that on your calculator, e to the first power, the calculator displays 2.71828.1828. That's what mine does anyway. Yours might do more or less, but it's given an even better approximation than using a million. And so you notice mine kind of breaks down here at 04, you know, at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 6 and 7 decimals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I've got 9 decimals of accuracy with this one. But essentially that's the number E. And so um, that's the Euler number. And so if you want, if you have a function like this, so f at x equals e to the x, that would be, um, you, you know, you could make a table and figure that out. So um, 1, if x is 1, e is 2.7 approximately. x is 2, it's going to be 2.7, you know, 2.718281818, whatever, to the second power. And on down the line. And so it's an exponential function, just like what we've been doing. And... Uh, your continuous growth then uh, let's do it kind of go back to how it's used like coffee decays at a you know cools everything cools at an exponential decay rate 
So let's say you had that same problem of $10,000 because I just like using money. Not that money is ever co compounded continuously, but $10,000 um, compounded at that 5% um, would look something like this. It would be $10,000 and then times E or the Euler number to the 0.05T. And so that gives you your continuous growth rate for $10,000. And so that's the Euler number and how it's used. Um, biology, continuous growth happens everywhere. So population typically is a continuous growth. In the United States, we grow at a rate of 3% compounded continuously. Um, that growth rate's going up as medicines get better and our health gets better and we live longer, things like that. So. Um, so there's continuous growth for you. And uh, one thing is GeoGebra recognizes it. So let me pull up that GeoGebra. Um, that's, that's what we're doing. There it is. So there GeoGebra, there's the what it looks like in GeoGebra. Um, I have, it uses this, there's e to the fifth and here's g at x equals e to the x. And so that's what this is graphing. And again, I'll just kind of rough sketch it there. Um, this is your horizontal asymptote. And uh, again, there's no vertical asymptote. So it goes on forever to the right and up. So there you go. And good luck. And I hope this helps. Maybe you kind of got an idea of what the Euler number is. And uh, see you next time.